Have you ever seen a satellite and wondered why it's covered in gold? Or how it's possible to keep liquid hydrogen within a few degrees of absolute zero? The Wazoo Hyperlab has the answers. We have Stasia Kolsa and mechanical engineering students here to explain the specifics of multi-layer insulation shields and how to construct them. MLI stands for multi-layer insulation. An MLI shield is a shield for a cryogenic experiment that will thermally isolate the system um, to help keep temperatures where they're meant to be. Professional MLI shields are an integral part of satellites. Not only do they insulate components from thermal energy, but they protect important instruments from dust. In rockets, for example, they use a special perforated mylar in their MLI shields so that when the rocket exits the atmosphere, the air can properly escape from the rocket without puncturing or damage the outer MLI layers. The downside of professional MLI shields like these, however, is the cost. We have found that an MLI shield can be created using photofilm and other accessible materials, which drastically lowers the cost of production. Typical MLI shields are made from an aluminized mylar, which can be bought in bulk from companies like Rollback. However, the mylar we used was originally for hydroponics and purchased from an online seller. It consisted of a thin coat of aluminum, and for our testing, we found that only single-sided aluminum was necessary. We chose to use 19 layers of mylar. In between each layer, we placed a sheet of polyester found from a fabric store to prevent conduction and add sturdiness from layer to layer. Other companies will use Dacron as the spacer, but after 30 tests of removing and putting back on our machine to check for durability, the polyester proved to function as needed, but only for one-fourth the cost of Dacron. Overall, our MLI shield functioned effectively for what was necessary, but for a fraction of the cost of industrial options. The question now lies in the functionality of the photofilm MLI shields when compared to the industry standard. Stasha used an FLIR thermal imaging camera to compare the thermal insulation between a gold-coated mylar MLI shield and an aluminum-coated photofilm shield. In order to determine how much heat transfer occurs due to radiation, we have this equation here that shows how the outer temperature and inner temperature difference can be greater as the surface area and contact with the outside environment is minimized. In this image, we define layer zero to be where the heat lamp was located, and the sub subsequent layers to be the next closest. The red section of the images were the hottest part of that layer, so pay attention to the scales on the photos. On just the heat lamp, the hottest part of the photo was above 400 degrees Fahrenheit, but on the last photo and layer, the hottest was 99.8 degrees, over 300 degrees cooler. While our results were as expected, we found that some outside factors prevented the shield from matching the outer room temperature, one of which was the size of the shield. Because of the larger surface area, some layers tended to trap more heat. In many cases, the experiment would be done in a vacuum, thus, outside factors and conduction would be limited. So not every shield does have a frame and top cap, but with Chef in particular, there was one. Some of the considerations for it were um, the amount of space that was available. Um, the, ex the outside of Chef was already in existence and we knew how much space there would be with the internal components of Chef, which gave us the frame that we would need to fit within. We also knew generally where the mounting points were going to be, which gave us where the legs for the frame were going to be. The other considerations were things like the material that it was going to be made out of, because that would change the fasteners that would be used, and it would also change how many supports would be needed in order to keep the structure fairly stable. So copper and aluminum are both used for MLI shields, or they can both be used. Um, copper is nice because it does have a high thermal conductivity, um, and it allows for a shield that can be fairly thin. Um, the disadvantage with copper, though, is that it can be fairly expensive. Aluminum is nice because it is a bit more lightweight and it's also a bit cheaper. However, it is harder to fasten it to itself, so generally other fasteners such as rivets or bolts are needed in order to close um, aluminum. For wrapping the layers, there generally is a internal structure. Um, so you start out with the layers of mesh or whatever the fabric material is um, spread fairly flat and you lay the, whether it's the square shield or a cylindrical shield like in Chef, down and you wrap that to get the amount of material that you'll need. Um, with this, there's also a lot of fabric is usually sold doubled over. So when you do the cut, you can have to cut it in half and that, but that will give you two layers from one cut. Um, so from there, that gives you the side of the shield. You would then lay out a single layer of the fabric material and trace around the top circle if you're doing a cylindrical shield. 
and cut a little bit past that to allow for a seam. So you sew the circle of the seam, uh, circle seam to the top edge of that larger rectangular cut, and then you sew the shorter edge to get a cylinder um, that fits fairly snug over the top of the shield. And then you essentially repeat the same process using the, um, the mylar material. However, instead of sewing, you are now using mylar tape to close it. And then essentially you just repeat that process until you have a complete shield. So for determining the number of layers, we worked with equations that were from Wesley Johnson's thesis through NASA, um, which can be found on the post about multi-layer insulation shields on the Hyperlab website. Um, these take into account a couple of the variables such as the temperatures that the experiment will be reaching and the layer densities of the shields in order to calculate the number of shields that are used, which ours are ultimately 64 individual layers or 32 of the mesh and mylar combination layers. These MLI shields have been known to last for years on many different installations. They have proven themselves to be effective in many different temperatures and situations, and we hope that you find ease and great success in the construction and implementation of these shields.